Hello students, welcome to lecture 16 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be on the overview of different 3D Photonic Crystals. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a brief introduction to the topic, we will take some examples of 3D Photonic Crystals, discuss about 3 dimensional lattices and we will see about the impact of uh, dielectric contrast for the case of 3D photonic crystals and how we generate band gaps and complete band gaps of 3D photonic crystals and then we will start discussing about you know different types of photonic crystals, spheres in a diamond lattice, yavlonovite. These are kind of you know uh, different types of photonic crystals. So to introduce this topic we have already discussed about 1D and uh, 2D photonic crystals. So, if you go for 3D photonic crystals, they are basically optical analog of ordinary crystals because ordinary crystals also exist in 3 dimension space. So, 3 dimensional photonic crystal is basically a dielectric structure where the refractive index modulation happens in all 3 uh, axes or all 3 dimensions. So, just to summarize, this is what happens in 1D photonic crystal, this is what happens in 2D photonic crystal. And this is what happens in 3D photonic crystal. That means it is periodic in all three directions. Now let us take some examples of 3D photonic crystals. So if you just for recap, if you try to you know look into some examples of 1D photonic crystal, Bragg grating okay, and dielectric mirrors will immediately come to your mind. Okay, if you think about 2D photonic crystals, okay, uh, the photonic crystal fibers that you see here. Okay, and the planar uh, photonic crystal, this kind of things should come to your mind. And whenever you think of uh, three dimensional photonic crystal, okay, uh, this kind of opal structure, wood pile structure, or inverse opal structure, these things should come into your mind. Okay, so these are all three dimensional uh, modulation of refractive index, right. So let us take some examples of uh, naturally uh, existing examples of uh, 1D, 2D and 3D photonic crystals. So photonic crystal structures are very commonly found in nature. So like whenever you see some bright colors coming from some uh, you know insects or natural uh, elements, okay, all may not be because of their pigmentation they may be strongly reflecting some particular color of light okay and if you take example of uh, morpho butterfly which is uh, shown here you can see if you see these bright colors coming from the wings and if you take the acm image of the wings you can see that these are basically 1d photonic crystal which are reflecting this particular color that means this color falls within the band gap of this photonic crystal so it cannot penetrate Remaining colors pass through but only this color, okay, the bluish color actually coming back to your eyes. If you take example of 2D photonic crystal and if you see a um, peacock feather under SEM, you will see that they are basically having 2D photonic crystal kind of uh, arrangement and this is why you can see these bright colors getting reflected from the peacock feather. Then you can think of this particular insect which also shows this beautiful reflection okay and when you see this under SEM image you can see that the periodicity is basically in all three dimension and that is why this beetle reflects beautiful uh, colors okay and patterns right. So this is the schematic this is an actual natural object that that we are seeing and these are basically the SEM images okay of the uh, samples. Now if you focus only on three dimensional lattices here, so the three dimensional photonic crystals all have novel properties uh, that we have already seen in the case of uh, 1D and 2D photonic crystals such as band gaps, defect modes and surface states. So this is how you know light localization happens inside a 3D photonic crystal. So if you look at it from you know the top that is you are able to see the 2D pattern okay and then this is from the side you can see that this is where the localization of electric field is taking place right. So 
In two dimensional photonic crystals, light can be localized at a defect or at a surface. And when you take three dimensional photonic crystal, the additional capability is added to localize light in all three dimensions. So you can actually have a micro cavity formed, okay, or something like a resonator cavity formed inside your uh, 3D photonic crystal, okay. So although there are an infinite number of possible geometries for a uh, three dimensional photonic crystal, let us first focus on uh, some geometries which promote the existence of the photonic band gaps. Right. So, if you remember the discussion from two dimensional uh, photonic crystal which has got a complete band gap, okay, complete band gap means the band gap exists for both the polarization for all the values of the wave factor. Right. So, we actually thought of this kind of a structure where you have veins, dielectric veins, okay, connecting this uh, spots, okay, or major dielectric concentrated regions, okay. So, these veins are giving you band gap for T polarization which is the polarization, the electric field is in the plane and you can think of an array of dielectric spots which give you um, band gap for TM polarization which means out of plane electric field vectors, right. So, using this kind of a structure we saw previously that we are able to get a complete band gap, right. Now, what happens in this two dimensional case, uh, the spots and uh, they actually uh, go along the z direction infinitely, right. So, they are basically parallel to the TM field. So, this is how you can think of the 2D structure, right. This is the SEM image and it, this actually goes uh, very large, okay. So, uh, Generally, you can think of a network of dielectric channels which is running along all direction is needed to be created in which electric field can point. So, if you think of three dimension, okay, you can actually try creating crystals with array of tubes and spheres, okay, which is analogous to the veins and the spots in two dimensional lattice or these are basically um, kind of replicating the bonds and atoms of uh, crystalline atomic lattices. So, this is how the 2D and 3D photonic crystal looks like and uh, if you look them under uh, SEM, okay, so this is how the interconnected uh, veins and spots will look like, okay. So, it turns out that the choice of the lattice and how it is connected is very critical in determining how exactly the band gap can be obtained. It means you have the complete control on engineering the band gap in case of this photonic crystals, right. So, in this lecture we will basically investigate several possibilities of creating band gap. So, this is a very common three dimensional lattice, okay. So, here you can see um, the simplest one can be considered of this only blue sphere. So, this is a cubic lattice and you just consider the blue spheres which are at the corners. So, this is basically a simple cubic kind of a lattice, right. And you can think of the primitive lattice vectors to be A x cap, A y cap and A, a z cap, okay. The caps are being placed at the wrong position where A is basically the lattice vector, okay. Now, if you only consider the blue balls, they are basically giving you a simple cubic lattice, okay. However, if you consider blue balls as well as the red balls, so the red balls are basically at the center of the face, okay. So, you start seeing a FCC lattice, right. So, you have these blue balls at the corners and then you have this uh, red balls at the center of the face. So, this is basically FCC lattice and then if you take, uh, you know, one pink ball that is equidistant from this uh, red balls and uh, and it is connected to you know uh, four balls something like one uh, blue balls and other three red balls. So, this is basically creating a diamond lattice, okay. So, okay this we have already discussed. So, if you only consider the dark red spheres, we are basically getting the FCC lattice and for FCC lattice, the lattice vectors are like halfway, okay. So, it is like x cap plus y cap a by 2, 
okay and then you have uh, y cap plus z cap a by 2 and then you have x cap plus z cap a by 2 that is correct right. So, in the case of uh, you know FCC we have also understood that the primitive cell is basically a rhombohedron okay this we have already seen in the previous lectures and this has a typical volume of a cube by 4 okay and uh, the the edges of this um, rhombohedron are basically the three that is vectors and here you actually can see the irreducible brilliant zone being marked and the important points of symmetry are also mentioned like x u l gamma x w k okay these are the important points of symmetry now the cubic cell that contains four species of this primitive cell okay so this one if you think of uh, this big um, cell the cubic cell actually contains four such cells okay and this can be an example of a super cell so you can actually repeat this also to create the FCC lattice but ideally all the information lives inside the brilliant zone and also the only independent information can be found inside the irreducible brilliant zone. So, for computation purpose if you only consider the irreducible brilliant zone you can get all the information about the band gap. If you want to spare more um, you know uh, if you do not want to find out the irreducible brilliant zone and you have computation resources you go with the brilliant zone and then if you are too lazy to find the brilliant zone also you can go with the simple uh, you know primitive cell which is this cubic cell that will also recreate the lattice but then you can imagine the amount of computation you will be requiring to calculate all the possible uh, you know the band gap band structure for this particular cell right. So, coming back when you are adding to uh, the pink spheres when you are going towards the diamond lattice from FCC lattice you are adding this pink spheres okay. So, what is happening it is another it is basically another uh, FCC lattice which is basically shifted by a by, a by 4, a by 4 and a by 4 okay relative to the blue spheres and this is how the diamond lattice is obtained and you can see in this animation how the diamond lattice looks like. So, this one is at FCC and there is something in the middle of it. So, that is why it is a by 4, a by 4, a by 4 okay. So, the periodicity in this case is same as that for the FCC lattice okay just that you will be having two atoms per uh, rhombohedral uh, primitive cell whereas in case of um, FCC lattice you will just have one atom inside that right. So, sorry. So, in an uh, atomic diamond lattice the spheres would be simply carbon atoms okay and um, where each atom is basically bonding to four of its uh, neighbors okay. So, why we are studying all these things because this kind of uh, 3D lattices which is exist in nature will give us ideas how we can actually place our uh, veins and uh, spots so that we can create the periodicity in three dimension right. So, if you return to our dielectric case these bonds can be imagined to be the dielectric veins okay and uh, they, they provide the diamond lattice with the requisite channel along the electric field lines can run through those particular veins. So, we will see that uh, all known photonic crystals with large band gap something like you know 15 percent okay or larger with uh, dielectric contrast of say um, 13 to 1 are closely related to the diamond structure. So, here is an example of a different photonic uh, crystal heterostructure okay which can actually help you imagine how a 3D you know structure might look like. So, once again for comparison purpose we are also showing the 1D this is uh, 1D, 1D this is okay this is there is a mistake here I think uh, this is not 1D okay. So, returning to the dielectric case um, these bonds can be imagined to be the dielectric veins and this dielectric veins provide the diamond lattice with the requisite channel for the electric field lines okay. So, the electric field lines can run through this dielectric veins and uh, we will see that all the no all of the known photonic crystals with large band gap 
something like you know 15% uh, of larger for dielectric contrast of uh, 13 is to 1 they basically are closely related to the diamond structure it means diamond structure is a very very uh, popular or commonly used structure to obtain 3d photonic band gaps so here is an example of how this structure might look like so you need you know periodic modulation of dielectric uh, constant so you need to drill holes in such a way that you are only left with veins and spots veins and spots okay along all three dimension so now we will focus on the dielectric contrast of 3d photonic crystals so consider a photonic crystal of only two different substances and uh, let's examine two basic uh, topologies uh, differing in whether you know the atoms and bonds are composed of high permittivity material or low permittivity material okay so here is an example so the ratio of the two dielectric constants that matters most and not the individual value so that is what you need to keep in mind that uh, we are not interested more more on the individual values of the dielectric constant rather we require really a good contrast between the two okay so usually the lower index is considered to be air and then the upper con uh, one can be silicon or something like that or even larger like epsilon equals 30 and then you can scale the entire dielectric uh, function by some constant so epsilon r can be scaled as epsilon r over s square and uh, this will result in a trivial scaling of the band structure where you can replace omega by s omega so let's uh, define the dielectric contrast as the ratio of the dielectric constants of the high and the low permittivity material so this is how you can define what is dielectric contrast now why it is important because larger the contrast we have seen that wider is the band gap and that is good for engineering of the band gap so now let's look into band gaps of 3d photonic crystals so band gaps appear tend to appear in structures with high dielectric contrast as i mentioned before the more significant the scattering of light the more likely a gap will open up and uh, one might wonder whether any dielectric lattice has a photonic band gap uh, for sufficiently high dielectric contrast and this is in fact the case for most two dimensional crystals at least for one polarization it may happen that you are not able to you know excite for both polarization but yes with dielectric contrast more or less along one polarization you will be able to see the band gap now you need to do some you know engineering and try to overlap the two polarizations together something like you can think of this uh, structure it's a two dimensional array or tri triangular array of air columns which is drilled inside a dielectric substrate of permittivity 13 and there you can see that you are actually getting photonic band gap which is existing for both t and tm polarization and for the all values of k vector okay so we have to aim for something like that but when you go to three dimensional uh, lattices complete band gaps are rarer okay it is not very usual to find um, you know complete band gap in three dimensional uh, crystals and it is much more complicated the gap must uh, smother the entire 3d brilliant zone and not just only one plane or line and that is why because the brilliant zone is much larger and complicated in case of 3d crystal so finding a you know co complete band gap is challenging so here you can see that if you uh, consider the band structure here of an fcc lattice of closely packed high dielectric uh, spheres having a permittivity of epsilon 13 and they are all in air but they are closely packed in a fcc lattice and this is what you see so although here you can understand that the dielectric contrast is very high it's 13 is to 1 but can you see any band gap uh, here photonic band gap the answer is no so for small small regions you might see some band gap but you do not have a complete band gap that is for entire you know all the directions of the wave vector okay so there is absence of 
complete photonic band gap. And the wave vector varies across the you know irreducible brilliant zone which between you know the leveled high symmetry points okay which you have already discussed okay. So just for a quick recap so if you have a FCC lattice so these are your important points so you can start with x okay then you go to u then you go to l then you go to gamma then you go to k okay or you can come back to x and then go to you know w and k that way also you can traverse or you can go this way so they have preferred to go like this okay so what are these different points so you can actually see that k is basically the middle of uh, an edge that basically joins two hexagonal faces what is l l is the center of an hexagonal face what is u u is basically um, it's the middle of an edge which is uh, joining one hexagonal and one square uh, face. What is uh, W? W is basically a corner point. What is X? X is basically the center of a square face. And these are the primitive uh, reciprocal lattice vectors capital T1, capital T2 and capital T3. Right? And this is how when you consider now diamond lattice of air spheres instead of having the solid you know um, material spheres forming the diamond lattice if you are able to place air spheres means you need to drill holes at the point of each uh, diamond lattice uh, lattice points you can actually obtain a pretty good complete band gap okay so it, it's pretty pretty wide band gap and it's a pretty interesting one so this is what you got to do here you see the direct structure that is with dielectric spheres of epsilon equals 13 in air could not give you a complete band gap but the inverse structure of it could give you the band gap so now we'll look into different types of 3d photonic crystals that can give us you know this complete band gaps so there are a number of three dimensional crystals that have been discovered that can yield sizable complete photonic band gap. So you can think of this particular structure where in a diamond lattice all the lattice points have got the spheres. Now you can also think of Yevlonovite kind of structure which is also a 3D uh, photonic crystal. We will come to this description of Yevlonovite in this lecture only after a few slides. So these are the two uh, kind of structures that can give us beautiful band gap. Then you can think of wood pile crystal. Wood pile you can think of you know how people pile up you know wooden logs. So this is how uh, you can think of this structure. Okay, just that you know this pile and this pile are shifted uh, half half the period. Okay, then only you will be able to get that nice band gap. Okay and uh, this is a stack of basically two dimensional crystals so you can think of this where you are having air cylinders running through okay so as you can understand that 3d photonic crystals are not very easy to fabricate as well right and the possibility of 3d band gaps you you have you must have seen this to gentlemen again and again and um, again coming back to them because you know they have done a great work by you know talking about 3D uh, photonic band gap structures in uh, 1987, exactly 100 years or one century after Rod, Lord Rayleigh could describe uh, one dimensional band gap. So it, it took 100 years in science to go from 1D to 3D in photonic band gaps. Okay. So it took you know another three more years before a specific dielectric structure was correctly predicted that could provide a three dimensional band gap in you know is a complete band gap in 3d and later on you know more number of systems with band gap have been proposed based on theoretical calculations and this is where theory shows the you know root for experimentation so when you find something interesting in theory you can uh, explore those in experiments but you should not be like re trying random experiments hoping that some hidden trial can give you you know the 
desired result so first you should do the theory that is why it is important to understand the theory behind this uh, concepts and how do you calculate this in in simulation model you are free to choose any parameter and run the simulation again and again that will not add up to your cost but you cannot keep on going and fabricating things and throw it if it doesn't work so that way you will add up to so much of cost for your experimentation and little success so what they have done they actually fabricated these structures and characterized them at wavelengths ranging from you know microwave to infrared mm. so they actually first did the experiments in microwave so you know the structure itself was much larger and it was easy to handle now there are currently many successful designs that uh, share basically the same topology but they differ mainly in the fabrication method so you can think of Evlanovite, you can think of uh, wood pile structure and then you can also think of a stack of two dimensional crystals right so let us discuss a few of these uh, most historically important structures and conclude with a detailed experimentation of a crystal that is closely related to the two dimensional systems and that will give us a better understanding of the topic so let's begin with spheres in a diamond lattice so k m ho found the first structure with a complete three dimensional photonic band gap by considering a uh, diamond lattice of spheres in 1990 and the structure is uh, very similar to this one except that the radius of each sphere has been considered large enough so that you know the spheres can overlap and you can get something like this okay so that actually removes the requirement of these bonds you don't require the connecting bonds right and uh, then it was found that a complete band gap exists whether one embeds uh, dielectric spheres in air or you consider air sphere in dielectric medium such that you know uh, as long as the sphere radius is chosen arbitrarily and that is what we have seen this direct direct structure could not give band gap but when you consider air spheres okay in diamond lattice that could give us the band gap okay and these points are nothing but this that is why i have repeated this again so it is x u l gamma and then x uh, w k so that is how you can traverse along the boundaries of your irreducible brilliant zone and you can actually plot this uh, photonic band diagram so what do you see that here um, are the sphere radius is chosen to be 0 0.35 a where a is the uh, lattice constant so this is the optimized value for which you can get the maximum band gap and how much is the band gap you can see that band gap does not exist between band 1 and 2 rather it exists between 2 and 3 okay and uh, that is a complete band gap and uh, the gap mid mid gap frequency ratio is 29.6 percent which is a pretty pretty good one okay so this is a complete photonic band gap which is shown in yellow here okay so remember that in this particular structure the most of the structure is basically air okay so the diameter of the spheres which is considered to be 0 0.65 a is basically larger than the distance between them which is a uh, root 3 by 4 so what will happen in that case the spheres will overlap and in that case you know both the air and dielectric regions get uh, connected and there will be no isolated spots of either material so if you think of uh, this as two interpenetrating diamond lattices uh, one of which is composed by say the connected air sphere and the other one is basically composed of connected uh, dielectric remnants so remnants are basically the remaining parts right so this remnants which will also follow the pattern of the bonds are basically acting as the channel along which the electric field lines can run and uh, this supports the modes in the two lowest bands however when these channels are uh, narrow enough the higher bands will be forced out and uh, that will basically create the frequency difference and then that can give you the band gap that you are looking for 
So, given this fact, one might expect that the three-dimensional structure could achieve the same property, something like, you know, a complete photonic band gap for a small dielectric contrast. And um, if the edge of the brilliant zone had uh, same magnitude, which is mod k in all direction, then you can actually think of a spherical brilliant zone. Okay. So, however, there is no three-dimensional crystal existing which can give you spherical uh, brilliant zone. But you can think that, you know, um, it is the FCC one is typically close to a spherical one. This is the closest one. Right. So, generally what you have seen that in uh, 3D crystals, you get polygonal solid, okay, other than simply getting square or hexagonal in two dimension, right. So, in this case, the band gaps in different direction uh, generally occur at uh, different frequencies. Now, if the dielectric contrast is large, we can arrange for all of these directional band gaps to be wide enough, okay, that can overlap and create a mutual band gap and that is how you get the complete band gap. So, what distinguishes the FCC lattice and uh, diamond lattice, which is also having similar, you know, lattice vectors and brilliant zone, is that, you know, for FCC lattice, uh, the brilliant zone is almost uh, spherical, okay. So, it is the most spherical of all, you can also think of, you know, the diamond lattice one is that it is the most spherical of all possible 3D lattices. Equivalently, um, the spatial period of the FCC lattice is uh, nearly independent of the spatial uh, direction. So, more or less it is similar in all the directions, okay, the spatial period. So, this seems to be a very important property that makes, you know, FCC and diamond lattice both as the most popular cases or favorable cases for creating three-dimensional band gaps. Now, let us look into this particular structure, Yablonovite. This is basically named after the scientist who invented it. You can actually guess. So, Yablonovich uh, made that particular th uh, 3D photonic band gap crystal. So, in his honor, it was named uh, Yablonovite. So, let us look into that system, okay, in more carefully. So, how do you start? You basically start with a slab of dielectric, okay, which is covered by a mask consisting of a triangular array of holes and then each hole is basically drilled three times as you can see here at an angle of 35.26 degrees away from the normal and this three times they are spread across 120 degrees from each other on the azimuth, okay. So, when you do that, you actually result into this kind of a three-dimensional structure, okay, whose uh, one one bird zero cross section is shown here, okay. So, the dielectric uh, connects the sides of a diamond lattice, which you can see, you know, like this, that is shown in yellow. And this vertical veins, okay, or you can see this uh, dielectric veins are oriented along 111 uh, direction. They have basically greater width, okay, than those oriented diagonally that is along 111 bar direction. So, that way the first structure was created and as I mentioned, uh, it was made first for microwave propagation. And that is the size of the holes, everything was much larger, they were in centimeter scale and this is how the holes were drilled, okay. So, this is just a cross sectional plane and this is the 3D view of that one. So, what happens here? This act basically creates, you know, like the diamond lattice of air spheres, okay. So, one can think of Evlanovite as two interpenetrating diamond like lattices one of which is a connected region of dielectric and the other one is basically a connected air region, okay. So, that mix up gives you this particular beautiful structure. So, when you drill holes of radius 0.234 A is the lattice period, 
you can actually get a complete photonic band gap. So, this has been optimized many, many times and you can actually see the computation gives you a photonic band gap of 19 percent, right. And uh, the wave vectors here basically represent the portion shown for the irreducible brilliant zone. So, this is how Yablonovite structure could give you around 19 percent, you know, uh, band gap. So, with that, we'll stop here and we'll start discussion about you know three dimensional photonic crystals more such examples and how we can obtain complete band gap okay in the next lecture if you have got any query regarding this lecture you can drop an email to me mentioning mooc and photonic crystal on the subject line thank you mm -hmm.